After ninth grade, Corey moved into his grandmother's house in Des Moines, and he spent the summer going cold turkey and renewing his acquaintance with the guitar. My grandmother, in a lot of ways, helped shape my uh, my musical tastes. You know, I mean, my first stereo was actually her only stereo that she ever had. I can remember listening to the Statler Brothers when I was a kid. My grandmother, big country fan. So I grew up with a lot of, it was Iowa. I mean, your choice was fish, really, when you get down to it. You know, so I can remember listening to the Statler Brothers, the Oak Ridge Boys. I was the biggest fan of Elvira. Are you kidding me? That song was fantastic. But then my mom was a huge disco fan, man. And this is like mid-80s, too. Like, this is late 80s. And so I had like all these like disco vinyl. So my friends would come over and they'd be like, why do you have the village people? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just in with my records, man. It wasn't until like I started kind of searching music out on my own that I started realizing what my tastes were. You know, I mean, my mom listened to a lot of Motown. So I, I would buy uh, like compilation tapes and stuff like that. But the first albums that my that I ever received as a present my grandmother bought me uh, Somewhere in Time by Iron Maiden and uh, Girls, Girls, Girls by Motley Crue. So those were my two first tapes, man. And I memorized not only the liner notes and the music, but just everything, man. You know, because, you know, you grow up with MTV. At that time, you could see those bands. And that kind of led me to the Trinity, Slayer, Metallica, Anthrax. And then, you know, that leads you to Megadeth, Testament, you know, so I was kind of getting out of people referring me to music, and I was finding my own music, and uh, with a lot of punk thrown in, you know, just from various babysitters who were probably not the best people to leave me with. Before Slipknot, Corey first found success with his band Stone Sour. My favorite memories of Stone Sour were the first couple years, man. It was all exploration. Everything was new. I mean, honestly, that was the first band that I really kind of uh, cut my teeth writing songs with. It was the first band that I played live shows with. I mean, I was young and out of my mind. I had long blonde hair. I probably weighed 140 pounds soaking wet. And I was, I just thought I was the hottest thing ever, right? I mean, it was so much fun though. Yeah, I lived to play music. So I, I, I can remember one year just quitting and saying, you know what, I'm just gonna live off the money that we make with Stone Sour which wasn't a lot, let's put it that I was able to buy cigarettes and booze. That's about it, you know. Thank God for grandmothers, because she kept me fed. My favorite memories were of, of just everything was new, you know. I mean, it, 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 there, there was nothing that we couldn't do. You know, there was, there was nothing that I wouldn't try on stage. I, I can remember that it, it taught me that I loved it. We would go out and we would play for weeks at a time doing three one-hour sets of originals and covers because that's just what you had to do and we discovered that we were really good we brought something out in people it was fantastic man I have no regrets about those first couple years you know I mean I listen to some of that stuff back and I'm like oh good lord it's so dated but at the time man it was just such a treat to be able to write a song and then play it for people. Kerrang Radio. I'm Loz Guest, and you're listening to This Is Who I Am on Kerrang Radio with Corey from Slipknot. Before joining Slipknot, Corey was working in an adult entertainment shop, and it was here in 1997 that he was first approached to join the group. When I left Stone Sour to join Slipknot, I was asked at four in the morning at the porn shop, they walked in, and they didn't even come right up to me. They walked around the shop. I know there's this whole legend about how they threatened to kill me if I didn't join, which is such rubbish. Let me tell you, they were so scared to talk to me, man. They walked around the shop looking at every box that they could, finally got, and I'm sitting at the counter just watching them going, what is going on here? Why, first of all, why are they here? And they they come up and uh, clown, God bless him, was so you know, man, I just, you know, this is, this, well, I'm just going to put it out there. And it was adorable. I was nervous. Like, I mean, I was initially like, my brain was screaming yes. But my mouth was like, uh, you know, I'll try. I'll try out, you know, because you got to realize it was such a jump. 
this was entering a metal band that there were no limits. And obviously I wanted to do it, but there was still that thing in my head that was like, you know what, let's try it out and let's see what happens. So the next night, I uh, I can remember grabbing my, my best friend Denny and going, dude, they I just got asked to join Slipknot. And he f started freaking out. He was just like, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. It's not all been plain sailing for Corey, though. His long battle with drugs and alcohol culminated on the night of November the 14th, 2003, when he attempted to jump off the eighth-story balcony of the Hyatt on Sunset Boulevard. After the initial success, there were very high points, but in you know 2003, there was a definite low point going on. Obviously, there was the, uh, the incident at the Hyatt on Sunset. I can remember standing on that balcony, ready, you know, God bless my friend Tom Hazar. If he hadn't been there, you know, uh, we would not be having this conversation today, you know. So you let yourself go, you know. You let yourself get to a point you feel like nothing's going to change. But you get past those problems and you realize, you know what, I can change these things. I can change everything that's going on with me. Those were when I started taking those first few tentative steps away from that. I had to let the booze go for a while, and here I am, hopefully for the better. It's, uh, it's a great feeling to know that you're in control of your own destiny. The one band that probably changed my life the most is Metallica. Total legends, you know? I mean, they were the soundtrack, really. I mean, there's so much music going on in my life, but they were the absolute soundtrack. I'm Los Guest, and you're listening to This Is Who I Am on Kerrang Radio with Corey from Slipknot. Corey still lives in Des Moines and married his longtime girlfriend Scarlett in 2004. Putting aside all his past troubles, Corey is now a family man at heart. I'm uh, probably the biggest pushover on the planet. When it comes to my kids, I love them and I try to be firm, but I just have such a great time with them. My kids are magic to me, you know? It, it's, it's such a great thing to be able to be a dad now. And the great thing is, is I had no template. You know, I had nothing to refer to. I couldn't be like, well, my dad was this way, you know. So, so for me, it's all new. And I'm not afraid to take advice from other people when it comes to my kids. And I think that gives me an open mind when it comes to that. It doesn't mean I don't get stressed out about the stuff that they do. But from a parent's standpoint, I, I would kill for my kids. You know, we just took them to, to Disneyland a couple, uh, about a week ago. They had the best time. And it was the first time that I had both my kids with me going on vacation like that. We got home and they were just exhausted and went right to bed. I feel very lucky that I'm where I am. The song that reminds me the most of my children is Bother. Not from a lyrical standpoint, because obviously that'd be pretty messed up. But it, it's the song that they both liked. My daughter, Angie, it's her favorite song ever. And uh, so much so that she did a report about it at her junior high school and asked me to come and sit in on it. And she she wrote this whole essay thing about it and uh, then played the track. And I just started bawling right in front of all of her friends. I'm sure she loved that. But then Griffin loved Bother even before he could speak. You know, there were times when he wouldn't go to sleep at night and the only thing that we could do was put Bother on uh, repeat, and he would go right to sleep. So that's the song that reminds me most of my kids. Kerrang Radio. You've been listening to This Is Who I Am with Orange, with Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Next week, we'll be talking to the Prince of Darkness Jr., Jack Osborne. I did always know that my dad was famous, but I wasn't, I didn't understand what I think it meant at the time. I just thought that's what dads did. And then when I started going to school and getting, you know, around four or five, you start realizing that not all kids' dads do that. This is who I am. With Orange. Burying the souls of our favorite music stars to see who rocks their world. Kerrang Radio.